Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thailand Dreaming, love letters from retirement. Today I'm heading out uh, on the bike to Huihin. I've got to go and do my uh, 90 day report at the immigration office. And so I'll be heading down to Huihin on the bike and just having a little bit of a chat while I go. I'll actually be narrating all the way through this and uh, showing some things. This is slowed down. You see this guy just zooms up behind me and overtakes me and then pushes out in the middle of the road. And Yeah, I'll show you some of the uh, incidental uh, comical uh, driving I see when I'm out on Thai roads. I'm not going very fast. This is uh, sped up for the purpose of uh, not being too boring and too long with just me chatting. So I'm just heading out of Cha'am now. I've gone through an orange light and uh, I'm on the main highway between uh, Cha'am and Huihin. So it takes me about 20 minutes. I sit on 110, 120 when I get out on open road. At the moment I'm doing about 90. So, uh, I'll uh, tell you what speed I'm doing at certain places in this video so you can uh, get a little bit of an idea about how fast other people are going in a semi-built up area, semi-built up, semi-rural area. And of course, uh, you've got to be careful around places like this. A lot of people just pull out and pull in without any notice, without any indication. You can see this guy's just going to pull out. doesn't matter who's coming. I watched him. He wasn't looking. So you have to be extremely careful around these uh, small shopping centres on the main road and especially around the markets. So it gets down into a bit more open road here. Now, I was doing 110 or 120. It's a green light to go there. And this guy just blatantly pulled straight out in front of me. Obviously, he didn't look if anyone was coming. So, yeah, extremely dangerous. And uh, as I've uh, put in text there, it is illegal in Thailand to carry people in the back of a ute like that. But it's uh, quite common. And everyone does it. No one polices it. So, at the moment, I'm uh, getting up towards 120 so I'm sitting on 120 here. It looks a lot faster because I've got the video sped up somewhat to um, so that this uh, trip on the bike or the on the bike part of it doesn't take too long. I know it's a little bit boring. Well, sometimes I find them a little bit boring, but it gives you a little bit of a uh, look into the trip from uh, Cha'am to Hua Hin going down past the uh, military base now. They've just put a new wall in and uh, some of you may have seen the Facebook TikTok post I did of the para paratroopers or whatever they were parachuting into that uh, last week. It was a bit of a sight. A lot of this road's been uh, resurfaced. It's, uh, it's a very good road. Some people just don't know how to use it. Some people here you see I've slowed down here, but I slowed down as well because you've got to be careful around these U-turn uh, bays and uh, 7-Elevens and markets and stuff like that. Now, somewhere along here I'll slow down because I want to show you a U-turn bay and it's probably about here. There it is there. So as you can see, you can turn into a lay that's lane that's specifically there to do a u-turn now you have to be really careful about those because people will push out from this uh, from the left hand side of the road and just go right across in front of you and also people will just zip out and chuck a u-turn right in front of you i don't know if they're not looking or they just expect you to move or hit the brakes or whatever this is a u-turn u-turn lane yeah, so you've got to be really careful around those. A lot of accidents happen at those U-turn bays. This is uh, the unofficial boundary between Pachaburi, which is the province I live in, and Prachop Kirikan, which is the province that Hohin is in. 
It's just been resurfaced. It's a magic little piece of road. Really lovely going through here. That's the runway above me for the Huihin Airport. And so now I'm down into getting into Huihin. So you'll see a few things here that are familiar to a lot of you. And some things, of course, for those people that haven't been here that are unfamiliar. The concept is a furniture place there on the left. Further down the road here, we have Macro, which is uh, a big, big store that sells just about everything you need. I like to go there. I got a lot of the stuff from my shop there. And um, there's the big red sign on the right there, Macro or him. And uh, yeah, they've got a lot of stuff, a lot of Western stuff. Now I'm doing 90K now because I'm in town. The speed limit here is 80. So that guy's obviously doing about 110. So we're right in town now. There's a lot of motorbikes and everything uh, pull in and out. And uh, there's a lot of U-turns because uh, people want to go to certain shops. They've got to drive up the road. And they do so either on the wrong side of the road and uh, or find the U-turns and just zip around in the U-turns. So you really have to have your uh, peripheral vision working overtime as well as your anticipation because you have to anticipate what these people are going to do a lot of times as you see that guy just pulled out in front of me doing about 5k you know i don't even know if he had an indicator on just let me go back and have a look there Well, no, he didn't have an indicator on, just pulled out, slow as you please, and I'm doing 80k down the road right behind him, obviously didn't look. So, yeah, it looks a lot faster than what it is, as I said, I sped this video up a fair bit. So getting down in towards Huahin now, down towards the uh, Royal Palace, which is just across this intersection on the left there, uh, that's the start of it there on the left. It's a really big property, royal family, royal palace. They have their own beach down. It's beachfront, of course. They have their own beach down there. You can't go on the beach. You can't go into these grounds. Of course, and it's all dressed up now because the king's birthday is just past on Wednesday. So I'm into Huahin now. Huahin proper. And I've got to head down to... Uh, Blueport Shopping Mall because in the basement of Blueport Shopping Mall is a small shopfront immigration office where you can go to do uh, some of the things you need to do with immigration if you don't need to go to their main office and so that's where I'm heading now to do this 90 day report all you have to do is take your passport in there and they stamp you another 90 days and give you a 90 days report uh, thing with the next date for your next report in the back of your passport. This is Huahin proper. I'm heading down now towards uh, Soy 88. Soy 88 is a pretty uh, popular uh, soy, pretty popular road here. Look at this guy just pulls straight in in front of me, no indicator, nothing. Just, you know, don't mind me, thank you very much. Yeah, so you just got to keep your eye open for this sort of stuff all the time. Now, I am doing uh, about 70 or 80 here. And I'm heading down. I'm just going past here to turn off to Soy 88. A lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels, a lot of bungalows and sort of stuff up that way. A lot of westerners. So I'm going to head down past Market Village where I usually go to because it's uh, better priced for people like me rather than Blueport which is extremely expensive and I never go there shopping. And that's why in Market Village they've probably got uh, about 50% more stores still open now than what Blueport have because the uh, prices at Blueport are outrageous to my way of thinking anyway, you know, so... Anyway, Blueport's just down the road here and I'm looking for, there it is there on the right, and I'm looking for the next U-turn bay so I can get around and uh, go back to the entrance to get into the car park. 
I like to leave the bike in the car park because the suit gets really, really hot if you park outside anywhere. So U-turn bay for me. Uh, I'll just wait till these uh, couple of cars go past and then I'll do my U-turn safely and straight up the inside lane and I'm going to go into the Blue Port car park here. So this is Blue Port Shopping Mall. It's a big mall. They have a lot of stuff here, a lot of food, uh, a lot of high-end um, equipment, you know, computers, phones, electronics and stuff like that and they have high-end you know, brand name clothing and stuff like that. So, got to find the car. Whoops, I've gone the wrong way. So, got to do a little Yui on the ramp. Head downstairs. I like to park in the car park downstairs for bikes. It just makes for easier entry and exit from the place when I want to get out of here. So, I find a car park and that's about it. Then I'll, uh, so, this is where I'm going today. I'm going to do my 90 day report for my visa and the immigration office. They have a little uh, shop office in here at uh, the Blueport Mall, which is in Hua Hin. So, I've traveled down here, it's taken me about 20 minutes. Uh, I can't go into that entry because they have uh, specific entries here where you've got to do your temperature and, uh, and you know, scan the QR code if you've got it, which I don't. And uh, just put your phone number, etc. Wash your hands. So you've got to do that every time you go in the mall. Well, I take those precautions anyway, everywhere I go. You know, I even put excess of the you know, lotion on my hands so I can rub it on the hands on the handle of the trolley when I go to the mall. So anyway, I'll stop recording now because I've got to do this. There you can see it. So I've got to do that to get into every mall and most places in Thailand. Okay, so I've uh, passed the entry precautions. Now I've got to go to the level of uh, immigration so i've got to find that now i'm pretty sure he said two so level two i'll go and have a look at that yeah so uh, as you can see there's not many people around in here it's um and the lift is extremely why won't it let me go to two it'll let me go to one what's going on something wrong with the lift. I'd love to get stuck in a lift all day. That would just be fantastic. So, no. Okay, so, I, I, it wouldn't let me go to the level I wanted to, so I'll have to find other means of getting there. Anyway, I'll turn the video around. Come on. Tinoy Immigration. Immigration, Chen B. B. Basement. Long. Basement. B. Cup and cap. I've been here before, but I don't come here very often, so, you know, I forgot actually where it was. The other guys told me it was up on two or three. Obviously, they didn't understand what I was asking them. These guys just told me it's back down on B where I just came from. So these are some of the things you have to put up with here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can have a look around this uh, shopping mall. Now we're cooking with gas. I'm down on the level that the uh, immigration office is on. So there's barely any people in here. People, uh, a lot of people here in Thailand are really, really scared because the whole thing's been handled so badly by certain powers that be, let us say. Got to be careful because they've just brought in some new uh, laws about what you can and can't say on social media what news services can actually report 
well, not not what they can cover, but what they can actually say in their reports. So there's, uh, you know, blatant and obvious censorship being brought into law here. So, yeah, people are scared because they're only getting the um, the dialogue of the powers that be, and inf- any other information is uh, very swiftly curtailed and stopped. So the immigration office is up the other end here. Uh, I want to go to the ATM first. So I'll stop recording while I do that because I don't want to give you all my PIN number. Okay, there's a few banks down here, bank branches. So you do get quite a few people down this way. And of course, um, Immigration is just over there. Okay, so I'll go to the ATM first. As you can see, it's empty. A lot of these shops are closed down for good. Just gone broke. Some aren't, some stay open, and I think most likely that uh, staff are on reduced wages. I'm not using my microphone, I should have brought it with me. As you can see, upstairs is completely closed. Upstairs, completely closed. Heading down to the lower levels now, and as you can see, there's uh, zero people. Just a handful of people and staff, but not much. So... Swenson's ice cream. I often times like to go there and have some of their really good ice cream. Okay, so heading down now to the level that the uh, immigration office is on. I'm going to stop recording for a while because I've got to go to the ATM and uh, get some money so I can get something. So uh, I've got to wait now because uh, even though they only open at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, they've closed now for a lunch break until 1 o'clock. So yeah, these things are sent to try us. I'm not tried too much though because uh, just going to sit and have a coffee, have a smoke, you can't smoke inside the mall. You can see the uh, main highway, this is the main highway that you uh, come into Chatham from the other main highway to this route that goes to Prachap Kiri Khan and heads south further places south you can see it's a Friday there's not much traffic on there it's very 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 quiet indeed yeah so I'm gonna have a coffee now chat later head back to Chatham go home maybe even have a nana nap it's getting around that time isn't it trusty machine spirit eyes protecting me from everything crazy on the roads here I've had the GoPro on on the bike so I'll show you some of the crazy stuff that actually goes on on the road here even when it's not packed okay gonna get on the bike and head home so that's the end of this one Uh, I won't bore you with the road trip home back home to Chatham I hope you enjoyed this little video of you know what I have to get up to during the day, day day-to-day stuff, now that we're in uh, a more strict lockdown and there's not so much stuff to do, not so many places to go. There's plenty of places to go, but many of them are closed. So you go to a national park and you spend an hour, two hours getting there and you can't get in because it's closed. So that's the way it's going here and it'll be like those day-to-day videos until I find something a little bit more interesting to add to my content. At the moment you'll just have to settle for day-to-day stuff in Thailand in the uh, brackets situation. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel share the videos and like the videos really helps me build the channel and all you people that have already subscribed liked and shared i thank you so much for getting me to where i've gotten to so far thanks for watching ciao for now